of the word that feeds our soul. And the topic for the sermon is with or without divine intervention, you choose. You choose. Because we can choose. We have a choice. See, God doesn't make any of us serve him. He doesn't make us serve him. He said, choose you this day. Choose you this day who you will serve. He gives us that choice. But we got to understand, we got to we got to choose right though. We must choose right because there's always consequences for bad choices. You understand what I mean? So you got to choose right because there is consequences for bad choices. Like for example, you can go out there and you can go out there and listen to your parents whenever we were younger. Sometimes we didn't always listen to our parents. I know I didn't always listen. But there's consequences sometimes when you don't. Consequences. And same thing, if we choose not to serve the Lord, there's consequences for us not serving Him. So choose you. So the, the, the topic again is with or without divine intervention. You choose. If you're going to go through struggles in life, if you're going to go through some struggles in life, some really, really tough problems in life, wouldn't you rather go through it with someone that can help? Amen. Wouldn't you want to go through it with somebody who can make a difference in what you're going through? If you're going to make it through, if you're going to go through some struggles and have problems in life, wouldn't you rather go through it with somebody who can help you out? Instead of having some dead weight on you, not only you got to try to handle this problem, but you got to lug somebody else along too who's not even helping out in the first place. Wouldn't you rather go through with someone who can help out the situation? Amen. Certainly we would. I know certainly I would. So I want so we don't have to go through this. We don't have to go in this alone. We don't have to go in this way of life alone. Because life is going to present problems. The Lord never told us that we were never going to have any problems. Matter of fact, in his word, it lets it tries to encourage us when we do go through problems. He tried to encourage us, saying after you have suffered a while. Why would he say after you suffered a while? Because suffering is going to be a part of what we go through sometimes. We are going to go through some things. There's going to be some problems along the way. Everything's not going to be smooth sailing. There are going to be some, there are going to be some waves in that ocean. But wouldn't you rather go through with someone who can help in a time of trouble? So he's a very present help in a time of trouble. A very present help in a time of trouble. So wouldn't you rather go through with someone that can make a difference in what's happening in your life? I certainly would. I don't want to go in it alone. And just imagine, like I said, we're all there's always there's always troubles, there's always problems. There's there's not and you can never talk to one person. You wouldn't be able to talk to one person and say that they never had a problem in their life. You wouldn't be able to talk to one. And you can't talk to one child of God just because they got saved. And they said that after they got saved, they never had a problem in their life. It's just not the way it works. So that means that, think about it. Imagine someone who is very ill. Very ill, and they had that problem. And then another person has financial problems. And then another person has troubles at work. They have troubles at work, and another person has trouble at home. In other words, and imagine that somebody who's going through all this. Imagine just even one person who's going through all this, because this can, this can happen in one person's life. They can have physical problems going on with their health. They can have financial problems. They can have trouble at home, trouble at work. So in other words, they're pressed on every side. They're trouble on every side. Trouble on every side. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 reads this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. In other words, God, we're going to go through some things, but when we go through it with God, we don't feel it all that much. We're going to be taken care of. He's going to carry us through. He's going to carry us through some of these things when we go through it with Him. Right? When we go through it with the Lord, we're going to, He's going to carry us through. So we got to make sure that we take Him with us. See, the thing, 
about it, we may see it. Can you imagine seeing somebody that, seeing a situation or somebody working against you? You can see it coming. Like it's like you can see it coming at you. You can see it coming at you. That unfavorable situation. You can see that they're coming at you. But when you serve Jesus, you can walk in the midst of the storm. You can walk in the midst of the storm. And yet, and yet, not be troubled. And yet, and yet not be troubled. And yet not be troubled. We have another little follow up here. Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. So, can you imagine walking in the midst of the storm? It's, everything's coming around you. Everything's falling apart around you. You can see it. You can see destruction trying to come your way. You can see it trying to come at you. But yet, it doesn't consume you. It doesn't take you over. It doesn't take you out. You can see it coming. But it doesn't consume you. It's like, so now, whenever that trouble comes your way, because you serve Jesus, you have a peace. You can walk in the midst of that storm with a peace. And other people are looking at you and they're saying, how could it be, how could he or how could she be that calm when all this stuff is going on around them? How can they, I know what's going on in his life. I know what's going on in her life. How can they be that calm in this situation? But see, the peace of God passes all understanding. That peace of God is tremendous. See, that's what we have. We have that which money cannot buy. Money can't buy that peace of mind. Money cannot give you that assurity that, you know what, I know whatever happens, the Lord got my back. I know whenever the children were, whenever the children of Israel were out in the wilderness, they had no food, that God sent them food from heaven. I know whenever they had no water, that God gave them water from a rock. I know he got this. I know he got this situation. And see, when we do that, we have it all. It's going to be under control. You can walk through the midst of a storm and have peace when you know that. When you can feel that. When you realize what he has done, you can walk in the midst of that and say, you know what? I know, I know Jesus got my back. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned with this. And if I am concerned, I'm going to do what I need to do. I, it's not about me anyway. I'm going to do what I need to do. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. So I'm not, I know I'm not in control of it anyway. So if I am bothered by it, I'm taking it up to him. I'm going to give it to somebody who can make the difference. So we got to remember that with or without divine intervention, you choose. Me, myself, if I'm going to go through something, Amen. I want the help of the Lord through it. I want the help of the Lord through it. Because even after Job, after Job went through everything that he went through, losing his children, being physically touched in his body, having a wife that told him, that told him to curse God and die, he still acted even with going through all that. It says, if you read it, Job in his, was better in his ladder than he was at his beginning. He was better in his ladder than he was at his beginning. He had more at the end than he had when he started. So I'd rather go through it with God than to go through this by myself. If you're going to go through some troubles, and you are, I'm going to, I'm going to let you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you're going to go through troubles, and you are, you should have God on your side, helping to take you through and guide you through this. You should have God on your side. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and and bear out some scriptures. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Chapter 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. And then we're going to skip a little bit. So we're going to go 16 verse 9. Then we're going to go 12 and 13. 16, chapter 16, verse 9, and then verse 12, and then 13. Okay, so here we go. So would you rather go through it with God? As I said, you choose. You choose if you're going to be on, if you're going to have God on board or not. But I choose to have God on board. So verse 9, 
It reads, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. He's looking for opportunities. Did you read that? He's looking for opportunities to show himself strong. Why wouldn't you want to take somebody on board like that? Just other people, whenever you have a problem, you know what? They're your friends when things are going well. Right? They're your friends when things are happening, when you look like you have something that you can offer them. But whenever things go bad, they may not be your friends as much. But he said, he, so they're looking to run away. They're looking to get, they're looking to go from the situation. But he's, he's running towards it. He's looking to show himself strong. I'm going to show, I'm going to show Donnie, I'm going to show Garnett how strong I am. There we go. I see they got a problem right there. I'm going to show myself strong. I'm going to show myself strong. Other people are running away. He's running towards it. Right? So let's read that some more. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them. See, this is the part, though, we got to understand. we got to make sure we're in this part. we got to make sure we're in this part. we got to make sure we're in this part right here. we got to make sure we're in this part to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts, whose heart is perfect towards him. Where thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. So in other words, it's not, these people are going to have, they're going to have they're going to have wars now. But did you hear what God had to say? Did, to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Whose heart is perfect towards him. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're talking about here. Here we go. That's what we're talking about. So, what I want you to understand, let's read on. Let's go to verse 12 now. Let's go to verse 12. In the same book here. And Asa. Alright, so go to verse 12. And Asa, in 30 and 9 years of his reign, was the steep was disease in his feet until his disease was exceedingly exceeding great. Yet in his disease, see this is this. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. See here at Ultimate Health, here at Ultimate Health Mind and Body Recreative Ministry, we believe in going to the Lord. We believe in going to the Lord. Preach. Don't just run and you got the sniffle. Say, I'm going to the hospital. Oh, man, it's eight. I'm running to the hospital. Did you seek the Lord first? Did you seek him out? Did you go to him? See, Asa didn't. Asa didn't seek the Lord out. He didn't do it. But this is what happened to Asa. Verse 13. Verse 13. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. That was a result of him not seeking the Lord. That was a result. He didn't seek the Lord. He sought man. He sought physicians. We seek God. We, that's who we seek. That's who we seek. Let's turn to 2 Kings. Now we're going to look at one completely opposite. These were both Right, these were both kings. These were both kings. But we're going to look at another one who did completely opposite of Asa. Let's turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, and we're going to look at uh, chapter 20. Chapter 20. And 1 through 6 we're going to look at. When you have it, give me some energy. Say amen. 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 Alright, so let's look at this. We heard about Asa. Asa didn't seek after the Lord. But let's read on and see what this king did. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, So he turned to the Lord. 
He didn't turn to physicians. He turned to the Lord. He didn't turn to physicians. He, and, he, and he prayed unto the Lord saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember. See, be able to have a, a walk that you can have and talk to the Lord about. You can, so you can be able to draw off of your life that you walk with the Lord. Don't have no frivolous life. See, he had something he could recall. He had something to stand on. He had a foundation that he could remind the Lord about. Let's go on. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy, in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again. And tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. See, it's important to prayer. It's important to have prayer, especially a righteous prayer. I, and I have, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Two different ways. One went and sought man and sought physicians. This one turned to the Lord and said, Lord, I walk before you. He turned to God. He didn't turn to man. He didn't turn and say, well, I'm going to try to do it my way. I'm going to try to get healed my way. Go tell, that, go tell that medicine man over there to whip up them herbs and bring them to me. To heal me. Because I'm sick unto death. But the Lord said that I'm going to die and not live. But I'm going to live because I'm going to get that man over here who knows medicine. He's going to help me out. He didn't do that. He sought the Lord. He had a life to stand on too when he sought the Lord. He had a life to stand on. So you make sure. You all make sure that you have a life to stand on. Make sure you have a life to stand on. Make sure you have a life to stand on. If the Lord would come today. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. If the Lord would come today. Could you do as Hezekiah did? Do you have a life that you can stand on? And say, Lord, I walk before you with a perfect heart. And where he would give you more time? Or would you just be gone that day? Because you had no life to stand on. Hezekiah had a life to stand on. He reached God. He didn't seek after man or physicians. He, he sought the Lord. And the Lord was the only one that could change it anyway. He sought the Lord. So let's turn to, let's turn to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. And I want to see if the first lady later on before we close out. And whoever else wants to help her sing this. Because she wrote a song on this. She wrote a song. We're going to see if we can turn to Psalms 91. Psalms 91, and we're looking at verses. We're looking at verses 1 through 9. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Dwelleth. Dwelleth. That means where you live, right? Where you live. So he that dwelleth in the secret place. So he that liveth in the secret place. Right? Who's, he that stayeth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. That means he's covering you. You're protected. Who's going to get in there? Who's going to get in there whenever he's covering you in his shadow? I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. In my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the newsome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Again, he's covering you. Who's going to get in there when he's covering you? Who's going to get in there? Somebody tell me who's strong enough to get in there whenever the Lord is covering you? No one. Is anybody strong enough? No one. No. Is anybody? No. Nobody. Nobody's going to be strong enough when the Lord's covering you to get in there. When He's covering you.
His truth shall be thy seal and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. You know how a lot of stuff seems like it goes on at night. You might hear sirens going on. Sirens. Some people live in areas where they hear gunshots. Pow, pow, pow. Going on at night. Some people hear all the ruckus going on out in the street at night. But it says this. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So listen to this, listen to this. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But listen to this. But it shall not, but it shall not come nigh to thee. It's not going to happen to you. It's not going to happen to you. Now let's read it on to this. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold ten thousand. So you're going to see it, but it's not going to come nigh to you. It's not going to happen to you. You're not going to be hurt physically by it. You're only going to be able to see the destruction. That's what, when you're walking with God, will happen. That's what the benefit of being with God compared to being without Him. That is what the difference is. See, that's what the difference between you and the world. That's the difference between you and the world. When you walk in God, you can see it, but don't be a part of it. Right? You can see all the destruction, but not being a part of it. It doesn't consume you. It doesn't take you over. But the world, the world sees it and get consumed and destroyed by it. The world sees it and get destroyed by it. But we only see it. We only see it. Right? So I thank God for that. Let's turn to Isaiah 55. Verses 1 through 3. Everybody, everybody still awake? Everybody paying attention? Amen. Huh? Amen. This, is food, this is food for the soul. Preach I'm it. telling you, Preach. you want to make sure that you have Jesus on board. You want to know all Amen. what he can do. Amen. Right? You don't want to be consumed. You don't want to look at, there are people that are afraid of God in their house because of because of what they call ISIS now? Is that what they call? There's people that were afraid to go out whenever 9-11 hit. They don't want to go into, I remember a guy at work was telling me, oh, he don't go into public places. He won't go to a theater. He won't go to that. Why? Why not? See, I got the Lord with me. You understand me? I got the Lord on my side. I may hear about it. I might even see it. But it's not coming nigh to me. That's the difference when we serve the Lord. That's the difference. So you want to make sure that you're lined up. Make sure you're lined up. So 55, Isaiah 55, when you have it, tell me and say amen. 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 We're going to go, go verses 1 through 3. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, and he that have no money, Come ye buy. How you buying with no money? Says he that have no money, come buy. How are you buying with no money? He that has no money, come buy. Come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and, and milk without money. Without money. Without money. And without price. Amen. Because God's going to provide it. He's going to provide it. It's all his anyway. And his words said, the cows on a thousand hills are mine. If I was hungry, wouldn't ask you. Why would he need to ask you? It's all his. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if he wants you to go somewhere and buy without money, you can go and buy without money. You can go buy without money. Wherefore do ye spend money? Now listen to this. This may be some of you. This may be some of you, but don't let it consume. Don't if, it's, if this is you, turn it around. Turn it around. Wherefore, do you spend money for that which is not bread? In other words, for things that are not profitable. Things that don't satisfy. That don't satisfy. Look at that bread as being something that's not prosperous. Alright? Something that's not prosperous. Wherefore, do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. 
Sometimes you're out here trying to do these different things. You're thinking that this is going to bring you happiness. This is going to bring you peace, right? You're out there doing all these things that don't have the Lord in them. And you're thinking about it, and it's not satisfying you. That's why people are running from one thing to the next. That's why they're looking from the one fad. They're moving from one fad to the next fad. From one fad to the next fad. They're not being satisfied. They're laboring for things to satisfy if not. They're laboring for things which satisfy if not. They're at, they're working. They're over there working, 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 and then finding out that while they're working, everything else is falling apart around them because they put all their money, all they put all their time, all their labor and work, and maybe didn't invest it in the Lord, right? So now while they were working, 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 everything else fell apart. Right? You know, you cannot, you cannot do these things. You cannot. You got to put your trust in the Lord. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, hear. See, listen to this. Incline your ear. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So my question is, with or without divine intervention, you choose. You choose with or without divine intervention. You choose it. You choose. So do you want to go this way of life without God? Or do you want to go in the way of life with God? You choose. You make the difference. All right, let's turn to St. John's. We're going to pick it up at verse 6. I mean, excuse me, chapter 6. Chapter 6, St. John's. Chapter 6, we're going to pick it up at 68. 68. All right. We have to say amen. 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 All right. Then Simon Peter answered him. See, the Lord asked Simon a question. He asked him something. He said, will ye also go? He was, he was asking this to his disciples. Will you also go? Because some of the disciples had turned away and decided not to follow him anymore. Some of them turned away and decided not to follow him anymore. So then Simon, so then so Jesus asked the question, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast, thou hast the words of eternal life. So why would you go anywhere? Why would you, why would you not have divine intervention? Where else are you going to go that's going to have the words of eternal life? Where else are you going to go? So let's go ahead and turn to St. John's. We're going to be in the same book. We're going to go to verse, we're going to go to chapter 15. We're picking up verse 1 through 7. This is Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not forth, beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So in other words, people who are not in Jesus, who are not doing the right thing, they can't do the right thing because they're not in Jesus, they're not, they're going to be taken away. They're going to be removed. They're going to be removed. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, of itself, except it be, except it abide in the vine. You understand that? The branch can't bring fruit. A branch can't bring fruit unless it's connected to the vine. It has no source. It's not getting water. It's not getting, it's not getting nurtured. You understand me? A branch can't bring forth fruit unless it's connected to the vine. 
except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So you can't do anything without him. Because he's your very source of life. He's the one that blesses you. He's the one that gives you the power to do the things it is that you need to do. Without him, you can't do anything. You can't do it. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, we got to be connected to the vine. Jesus is the vine. He's the one that's going to nurture you. He's the one that's going to allow you to grow. He's giving you your very source of life, your very source of fuel, your very source of energy. He's giving that all to you. So if you're not connected to him, you're not going to flourish. Now you may have what I call fool, fool's gold. We know what fool's gold is, right? It looks shiny on the outside. And that's the way that some people are having it right now. They have these little blessings they got going on right now, thinking that they're doing something. Right? They think they're doing something with these little blessings that they got going on right now. They might have a little bling bling. They may be, they may have their cars going, their nice shiny cars with their wheels on it. They got these little fool's goals going on right now. They got that little, that little stuff that Satan throws out at them to give them, to distract them from the truth. So they have that little fool's goal going on right now. But it doesn't last. That stuff gets rusted. It gets corrupt. It grows. It goes old. Somebody can steal it. Some people can take it away, right? But see, but the true, the true, the true blessings come when we're connected to the vine. Because nobody can take that away. Nobody can take it away. No one can take it away.